Hey guys, welcome back to There is only abundance, no lack. If this wasn't clear already for you at this point, having learned about the origin story of infinity, creating free will and then creating all of creation, <clears throat> and the fact that everything happens all at once, and all that there ever exists is infinite, complete, parallel realities, and they're all accessible, they're never actually lost, they're never newly created, nor are they ever lost, they are all outside of time, they all timelessly, eternally exist. So all possibilities, all infinite possibilities, always simultaneously coexist and are accessible to your overall consciousness. <clears throat> if this itself is not enough to let you know that abundance is the very state of creation itself, that there is only abundance, that there is no lack, then this lesson hopefully will give you even more confirmation, even more angles to view existence from that are in alignment with its natural law of abundance being all that there is. So again, I ask you to be reminded of the idea of parallel realities. But now look at the fact that this implies infinite abundance. If each moment is a snapshot, is a single configuration of the universe, and you can sift your consciousness, shift your consciousness through different types of configurations of complete universes, and every snapshot is its own complete, timeless, frozen moment. That means that everything that ever can exist does exist, already exists, and is ever present and ever available, all contained within the eternal now. The now of the I am consciousness itself, the now of the creator itself this only moment that has ever experienced now. All these realities, all possible realities that you or free, the free agent can ever conceive of already exist and they always will be accessible. So you see, there is only abundance, there is no lack possible because lack would imply that something disappears. But if each complete reality is its own snapshot of eternity, and it exists outside of time, outside of the illusion of time that we generate by moving from one image to the next, to the next, to the next, therefore creating the subjective experience inside of ourselves of time. But the frames that we have perceived at any given second are themselves not experiencing time. They are timelessly rested, eternally present and available. We generate the experience, the illusion of time by going from one complete timeless frame of existence to another complete and timeless frame of existence to the next complete and timeless frame of existence and so on and so forth. So you see, structurally speaking, time does not exist. This moment does not know time. This circumstance, this configuration of the universe does not experience itself in time. It does not experience itself as, oh, I am a snapshot that now appears out of no nowhere and now disappears. We experience that things appear and disappear, but only because we move from left to right, so to speak. We move from this image to this image to this image. And as soon as we move to the next image, that means the previous image disappears from view, not from existence. There is a difference. Things lack from view, but not from existence. Does that make sense? Ponder this difference. Yes, every moment that we've experienced in what we call our past, has disappeared from our personal view. But that does not mean it disappeared from being existent. It still exists because it already existed before you moved your consciousness to that vibratory location, time, space frame. So you see, time does not structurally exist. Each frame does not experience itself in time. It experiences itself as frozen and timeless and complete, complete presence of a particular expression of infinity. Boom. Every moment is a complete, perfect expression of infinity in a certain configuration of its own possibilities. Boom, boom, boom. And it has infinite ones of these. And the free agent or you, consciousness, you awareness, are effortlessly moving through millions of these every second. Millions of different configurations, different of complete, timeless realities. 
Hence, creating the time experience inside of your view only. Outside of your view, time does not exist. It's a personalized, subjectively created illusion. It's irrelevant, it's a real experience, but it is an illusory creation. It is created, it is not an actuality. It is only existent as an experience, not as a structure of existence. So, lack implies that something can actually disappear from being existent. Now, we can generate the experience of moving on from one image to the next, and we do this all the time. Therefore, we can generate the experience of lacking something that we had before. But again, remember that within the overall consciousness, the thing you previously experienced and now choose to no longer perceive are, is still existent inside of your overall consciousness. You still have access to it, you can still connect to it using imagination, but we'll get into that later on in a different lesson, using the power of imagination. But just know that consciousness has access to any potential possible configuration of creation. So nothing is ever lacking, nothing is ever missing. Right now, are you missing a baseball cap? Are you lacking a baseball cap, a green baseball cap? No. Yes, it's not inside of your view, unless by coincidence or synchronicity you're wearing a green baseball cap. But let's say that for most of you that's not the case. Unless synchronization or uh, synchronicity kicked into overdrive and somehow had all of you watching this video at this timing wear a green baseball cap, which is possible. It is possible because this is all a cosmic joke. But let's say that this is not the case. Yes, a green baseball cap may be lacking from view, but were you experiencing a lack of it? I bet not. You were not blocked from hearing what I was saying because you were so preoccupied with where your green baseball cap is. Correct? So assuming that this is correct, that your experience was not lack of a green baseball cap, it might have been lack of money, it might have been lack of something else that you made relevant for yourself in this moment that you believed you should have had present in your view at this timing of creation being inside of your view. But the base baseball cap is as absent as anything else that you worry about being absent, except you did not worry about the green baseball cap, yet it was lacking. And along with the green baseball cap, there is 99.9999 times percent of creation is not present inside of your conscious personal view at this timing. If lack was an actual experience that you needed to have if something was missing from view, that would mean you were absolutely devastated right now, all the time, because almost all of creation is lacking from view as we speak. In fact, at any given moment, you only ever view one parallel reality at a time. There might be millions in a single second, but at any given moment, you only ever experience one potential configuration of energy, each nanosecond. So, you only ever experience a single slice out of the infinite parallel realities that exist. Does that imply that you should experience the illusion of lack? That that should be your feel, your felt, contracted experience? No, it does not mean that. And it does not feel good for the same reason that the emotional body will always let you know that your perspective is out of alignment with the way creation actually works, with the way that your higher self sees reality. So if it was true that your green baseball cap was actually lacking from existence right now and that it was relevant for you, you would actually feel really, really good about believing that that was lacking. Why? Because that would have been a true thought. It would have been a thought, a perspective, in alignment with the way your higher self sees things. But higher, selves, higher self does not see a green baseball cap lacking from your experience right now. It does not perceive money lacking from your experience right now. It does not perceive a lack of the ability to do what you want to do in this moment. It does not perceive that lack. So when you say that there is a lack of all these things, it will make you feel bad because you're stepping outside of your center of being. You're stepping away from the natural gravitational center of your alignment. Hence, you will feel the tug back towards the center of gravity of your alignment. And that tug is felt as suffering. So when we step away from our center of gravity too much, we feel the tug of being brought back by our higher guidance, by our non-physical mind, back into the center of our gravity. 
we will feel that tug, but we'll interpret it as suffering. And then we usually use that to apply that to a circumstance and say, well, see, I feel so bad, something must be actually missing. But the only thing that's missing when you feel bad is your alignment with the truth of your being. That's the only thing that can ever feel bad, is your misalignment with yourself. So once again, lack does not structurally exist. If it did, it would feel amazing to think about it. But it does not. It feels terrible. In fact, all forms of suffering can be traced back to holding on to some belief that lack exists right now, or that it can occur to you, or that it has occurred to you. Notice this. Every time you suffer, you believe in lack in some form. It may be very disguised as something else as something very real and logical. Yeah, but I want to do this, but I don't have the money to do this. So that's just a logical response to life. No, it's not. It's a chosen perspective that makes you feel either in or out of alignment, depending on how in or out of alignment your vibrational attitude and perspective of that moment actually is with your non-physical mind or your higher self's point of view of existence. So, you see, in a timeless creation filled with infinite, 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 infinite parallel realities that are each a complete universe in and of themselves and that nothing that can ever be conceived of is ever not created. Everything exists that you can think of. How could there be structural lack? There is no structural lack in existence. You are simply moving your consciousness from reality to reality and sometimes you're not aware of certain things that you may desire to be aware of in that moment that may are that are wanted by you inside of your view but they're simply not inside of your view right now because that's not what's relevant for you that's not what's part of your vibratory emanation in that moment your vibratory attitude is not in alignment with that creation therefore you cannot perceive of that coexistent within the same now parallel reality that you otherwise could access if a it was relevant for you to have that experience and b if you were of the appropriate vibrational attitude and perspective to be able to perceive that vibratory parallel reality within which the thing that you think is lacking now actually already does exist as a complete perfect reality and it can never be created or gotten rid of because it's outside of time as is each perfectly parallel universe configuration all of them are outside of time free of time they all eternally exist everything that you can think of eternally exists can never be gotten rid of so you see within the overall consciousness of your beingness all these things that you may perceive are lacking from your personal consciousness view right now from your i am this sense of self in your overall i i consciousness awareness all these creations are available and again, using the power of imagination, you can tap into the vibrational experience of these things, even when they're not relevant for you to be physically inside of your personal consciousness view right now. But you can always have access to them on a non-physical level. And by doing so, you actually increase the probability that it becomes relevant for you to have these experiences pop into your view once again, or things that you have never created as a personal experience before can now pop into view because you're moving your frequency along but more on that later. For now, what I want you to realize is that there is no lack in creation, that it is a fiction, that one of the fundamental principle laws of creation is that there is only abundance and zero lack. If you can understand this, then you can start to free yourself and empower yourself to become once again in the vibrational, to rest yourself once again in that vibrational attitude of being the creator of infinity, of being an abundant, infinite vibrational consciousness rather than a physical body or a physical mind. You are an overall consciousness that has the ability to generate an experience of whatever it wishes to tune into that already simultaneously exists with your present point of view. So again, it is not relevant for you to create the illusory experience of lack. And the sense of lack is only based on your definition of what is lacking. You're never actually lacking anything. There is only abundance and there is zero lack. So if ever you perceive lack, 
then you know instantaneously that A, it will make you feel bad because it's an out of alignment point of view that existence does not know what to do with. It does not compute with its fundamental law that there is only infinite abundance. Infinite endless reality is at your disposal and there is never a lack of anything you desire. Not really, not structurally, not in existence. Everything always already exists and always already will exist. So whenever you generate the perception of lack, you know that the only person that you should be looking at is you and your own consciousness. Your definition, your perception of what is, is out of alignment. Not what is, is out of alignment. What is can never be out of alignment. Only your perception of what is can be out of alignment and thus then make you feel bad so that you know that you're not stepping fully into the gravitational force of your true alignment. You're not being completely inside of the center of your being. You're stepping out of it too much. That's why it hurts. So always not blame, but always know that it is up to you to change your perspectives and that lack, if it's experienced, and this is what suffering is, it's the experience of generating the belief that lack in some form exists or will exist or has existed. Therefore you suffer because it's not in alignment and it tugs you hard back into your center. It wants to guide you back into center. So know that whenever that occurs, it is up to you to change your perspective and to remember the simple and profound truth that there is only abundance and you have to only have faith and knowingness in that abundance. Remember that it's true. Remember that infinite realities are at your disposal and that lack does not exist. If you can shift your allegiance from believing lack exists to knowing it does not, from knowing it cannot exist, from knowing that there is only abundance, only infinity, only free will, only love, only endless immortal consciousness. And that sky is the limit or the beginning. Then you can always come back into alignment, into your center of being. And from that center of being, you will feel powerful. You will feel inseparable from creation once again. You feel like you belong to the all that isness that you actually are. And you will feel that nothing is out of reach. Rest in abundance. Relinquish your allegiance to lack. It is a man-made creation. None of the universe recognizes it. Only human minds that are obsessed with their own ideas of what is true and what is not true. But outside of the human contrived, stupid little mind, there actually is only abundance, only love, only trust, only faith, only goodness, only inseparability, only interconnectedness, only endlessness, only infinity only free will. So enjoy becoming a part of creation once again, as you've always already been, and enjoy slipping outside of the mental constraints of the man-made thought realm that we've all collectively agreed upon, but that we are now shifting around, thanks to the help of many of you. By changing yourself, you become an example of this change. So change in alignment with abundance and away from the ideas of lack, so that we can all collectively follow your lead, mimic your example, and then through that vibratory amplification that you send out by being rooted in your center of alignment, your center of gravity, your center of being, and exuding only abundance, only faith, only knowingness, only confidence, only empowerment, more and more every day, because you care about your life and you care about it being existence. Others will mimic you, collective, the collective will start to mimic you and we will all co-create a civilization within which even the illusion on a physical level of lack will no longer be created and everything starts to spontaneously show up for everyone. Whatever they need, their basic needs, but even their heartfelt desires will start to pop up sooner and sooner, faster and faster because we all collectively believe and exude that we can and that this is how creation works. So we start to operate in flow with infinite abundance and start to end the days of lack which again is just a thought. Existence does not know what to do with that thought because lack does not actually exist. So the homework for this lesson will be that you write down five things. You can make this 10 if you want to, but five things that feel like those are things that are close to your heart that you desire. And it can be anything, it can be as spiritually mundane as money or as spiritually mundane as self-realization. doesn't matter. It's all the same substance. It's all creation expressing itself. 
don't make value judgments on what you should desire and what you should not desire because from the point of view of infinite creation everything is desirable because all are adding to the expression of the one all are adding to the one getting to know itself a little better each day in the form of you so all desires are in that sense holy or sacred So you write down five things, or say 10 if you want to, if you can find those things, that are close to your heart that you desire, that creation in the form of you just so happens to want and desire, uh, for whatever reason, things that feel exciting to you. You write these things down that you believe are not yet present in your life. In fact, you might even have a little bit of a lack belief regarding these things. Something is not present yet that I want. Why is it not here yet? Etc. So write some of these lacking things down, the things that seem to be lacking from you at this moment that you desire, that you feel some passion towards. And as you write these things down, go over your list and one by one just stop at each one of these ideas, keywords or sentences. And allow yourself to experience going from believing they are lacking to actually feeling that they're completely abundantly present they're simply not right now in the personal consciousness slice of creation of your particular point of view that is relevant for you to experience right now. But start to feel how that does not imply that these things don't exi exist. In fact, if they wouldn't exist, you wouldn't be able to even conceive of them because nothing can be newly created. Everything that does exist or can exist already does exist. So if you are excited about something, that means it's already existent on some plane of consciousness, on some vibratory state of consciousness. So simply know this. As you look at the item that seems to be missing, seems to be lacking, and start to feel into your own expansion. Expand past your own point of view and start to notice, using imagination a little bit, that that which you desire actually does exist and that the reason it's not in your personal point of view right now is because A, it's either not relevant for you or B, you are not completely of the vibration of readiness yet that, that computes, that resonates enough with that particular parallel reality of consciousness for you to experience it as your personal view right now. But most importantly, experience that it's not actually lacking. So what I want you to do is to go from feeling like it's lacking to feeling like you can sink into the faith and the trust and the knowingness that it's already here and it's already awaiting you. And it's simply a matter of non-existent time or rather vibrational evolution because that's all that time is until you will gain the relevance for this to come into your personal view. So with each of these items that you're passionate and excited about that seem to be lacking presently, I want you to transform those definitions of lack into faith, recognizing the abundance of all that is, the abundance of the thing that you desire, and the, the faith, the knowingness, the restfulness, the peace that comes with realizing that it's already yours, otherwise it wouldn't excite you. And it's only a matter of vibrational time for you to shift into this before it's irrelevant for you. So that you feel complete about where you're at right now. That you know that, hey, this is what's relevant for me right now. Let me just enjoy this moment as it is, as it comes. And learn from it and insert more and more of this higher frequency. Let me insert more and more of the vibration that represents the thing that I desire. Into my present point of view. So that it may become more and more relevant for me to experience things just like the things that I desire to come into view. So I want you to feel abundant and complete about the things you desire that are simply not relevant for you to be experienced in your present point of view. But I don't want there to be any lack feelings left regarding it. So sit with each of these items and start seeing it from your new points of view about parallel realities being already completely here, indestructible, you can't miss out on an opportunity because it already exists. You simply have to shift your frequency and at some point you will when it's relevant for you. I want you to feel complete about where you're at and the fact that everything that you ever desire, you already own. It's already yours. It's already eternally, timelessly existent and you can visit it whenever you want to and whenever it's true for you. So do this with every item on your list and listen to this list lesson or view this lesson again at least once more before you open up your next lesson. Thank you and have an amazing day. Thank you.